Oh, you're gonna love this one. So Australia just did something insane. They banned social media for anyone under 16. Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, all of it, gone. $50 million fines if platforms don't comply. And here's what's wild. They actually might be right. So today we're diving into Australia's radical social media ban and what it reveals about teenage brain development. I'll show you why governments are suddenly treating TikTok like cigarettes, the casino psychology these platforms use on 13 year olds, and there's this forbidden fruit problem that could backfire spectacularly. Plus I'll reveal why China has been doing this for years and what happens. Let's get into it. So last week a mom in my program goes, Gregory, Australia banned social media for kids. Can they even do that? Should we do that? Look, everyone's losing their minds over this. Half the world think it's brilliant and the other half think it's authoritarian overreach. But here's what nobody is talking about. This isn't really about social media. It's about what we've discovered happens to teenage brains on these platforms. And whether you love it or hate it, it reveals something terrifying about what we've been doing to kids' brains. So Australia's Online Safety Amendment Act. It doesn't mess around. Starting December 2025, if you're under 16, you can't have an account on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, X, or YouTube, period. But here's the genius part. They're not punishing kids or parents. They're going after the platforms. 50 million Australian dollars per violation. That's not a fine, that's basically a declaration of war. Now, YouTube thought they were exempt. They lobbied hard. We're educational. Nope, the government said. Yeah, educational about how to develop eating disorders and believe the earth is flat. Banned. University of Melbourne researchers who study digital policy say that the law's real power isn't even enforcement. You know, kids will use VPNs, they'll borrow accounts, whatever. The power is that it shifts responsibility from exhausted parents to billion dollar companies. So think about it. You know, for, for years we've been telling parents control your kids' screen time. While these companies are literally employing teams of neuroscientists to make their products as addictive as possible. Australia just said, enough. You created this mess, you fix it. But wait, Australia isn't even the first. China has been restricting kids' digital consumption since 2019, but with video games. So it started with 90 minutes on weekdays for kids, then in 2021 they basically went nuclear. One hour per day, only on weekends, only between 8 and 9 p.m. One hour. Can you imagine American kids with one hour of Fortnite per week? There would be riots. So Beijing University studied what happened. Yeah, kids found workarounds, of course. Of course it is. But average gaming time still dropped by 70%. 70%. And here's what's really interesting. Both China's gaming restriction and Australia's social media ban are based on the same premise. Teenage brains can't handle what these platforms are designed to do. I mean, Think about that. Two completely different governments, different cultures, different political systems came to the same conclusion. We need to protect kids from Silicon Valley's business model. Now, why are governments suddenly treating TikTok like cigarettes? Temple University research from 2023 shows that between ages 12 and 25, your brain is in what they call a neuroplasticity window. It's basically Play-Doh. Whatever happens during this time, tends to stick. So San Diego State ran a longitudinal study that year. Heavy social media use during adolescence correlates with increased anxiety, depression, and sleep disorders. But here's what's crazy. It's not about screen time. It's about the design. So Dr. Anna Lemke at Stanford discovered these platforms use intermittent variable reinforcement. Know what else uses that? Slot machines. They're literally using casino psychology on 13 year olds. So the argument is simple. We don't let kids smoke because it damages developing lungs. We don't let them drink because it damages developing livers. So why do we let them use products designed to damage developing brains? When you put it that way, it sounds obvious, right? But there's a problem. See, University of Toronto researchers in 2022 found something called the forbidden fruit effect. Tell teenagers they can't have something and suddenly it's all they want. Remember when your parents told you not to date that person? How did that work out? And there's also what psychologists call psychological reactance. When people feel their freedom is threatened, they rebel. Teens with VPNs are about to become the new drug dealers, you know, like, psst, kid. 
on some Instagram account. But MIT research from 2023 suggests we might be overreacting. When you change the environment and provide alternatives, young people adapt faster than we think. It's not about taking something away, it's about replacing it with something better. The question is, what's the something better? Because if the alternative is just Nothing. Kids staring at walls? This won't work. You can't just remove the addiction without addressing the need it was filling. Look, the EU is watching. Several US states have bills ready. The Australian experiment could trigger a global shift. And what's fascinating is this represents a complete flip in how we think about digital responsibility. For 20 years we've been saying, parents control your kids. Now we're saying, Tech companies control your products. It's like food safety. We, we, we don't expect parents to test their kids' lunch for E. coli, right? We expect companies not to sell poisoned food. Tristan Harris from the Center for Human Technology calls this the systemic solution to a systemic problem. You can't solve industrial scale manipulation with individual willpower. That's like trying to solve climate change by asking people to take shorter showers. But University of Illinois research from 2022 shows the real challenge. You need meaningful alternatives. Take away social media without providing real connection, real activities, real purpose. You're just creating a void that something worse might fill. So here's what this really tells us. We've basically been running an uncontrolled experiment on kids' brains for 15 years. And governments are finally saying, okay, maybe we should have some controls. So this isn't moral panic. The, the neuroscience is real. The mental health crisis is real. The addiction mechanisms are real. But it also means admitting something uncomfortable. We let tech companies turn our kids into lab rats because we were too amazed by the technology to ask if we, if we should. Now we're trying to put the genie back in the bottle. Good luck with that. Now think about it. We're basically admitting that the most powerful companies in the world have been allowed to psychologically manipulate an entire generation. And we just let it happen. So I'm curious, if your country banned social media for kids tomorrow, would you support it? Or is this going too far? Drop a comment below. I read every single one and I'm genuinely curious where people stand on this. Brain out. Shark.